Now, there's three odds and ends I wanted to show you. That ends is, it's not a drill. I didn't know where they fit into the crossways, bottom leg, near cradle, under leg cradle that we were going over, things to talk about. Okay, when you have a near cradle and you have one's back and the near shoulder is up, sometimes this will happen. How do you get it down? These are those little what ifs we take place a lot of times in wrestling. I have my hands locked, I have the leg hooked in, I have it here, and this near shoulder is still up. Right here, this near shoulder is still up. But I've got it tight. How do you get it down? If you can drive a stake down through my heart, being a vampire, kill me, you know. Okay, hold this part still and let my legs go out that way, rotate out, which that's what I'm gonna do. Watch what happens to the shoulder. Here I'm hanging on to it. Scoop, scoop. Now I scoop normally quicker than I'm now, am now, but the near shoulders now down. I scooted from here to here. My upper body stayed still. I scooted what about two feet. And that slowly inches that near shoulder down. So when you get here and that near shoulder is up and you're fighting it, scoot, 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 scoot. As you scoot, that near shoulder pops down. Okay. And something I covered on our metronome and our cradle re cradle drill and our roll around cradle drill. When you're on your back, when you're anywhere on the mat and you have a cradle on and you're not sure, that's a near cradle, you're not sure where you are, hit a bridge. Just hit a high bridge. If he's completely on you, if he caught you, you have a near cradle, you're here, and he caught you, and you go, uh oh, I don't like this position. Plant and bridge. I'm going to You can go, let's put a bridge I can anymore. Okay, he's down here. I've got it caught here, okay? I'm, I'm starting to get in here. He's not in a good position. Don't let go and bail out. Just plant your feet, hips up, and then toss me right back off of it. So, when you're caught, plant your feet, hit a bridge, and you're taking the cradle and you're doing this with it. You're throwing it over your head, and you'll throw him right off you, and you'll be right back in control. He'll be on his back, match is going to end. So instead of bailing out, let him get a reversal and two back points on your two and three, or have you bridge in there for a little while, bridge ahead of time. Don't wait to bridge when you lose the points. Bridge before you lose the points and you end up getting the points. That's up to you. So when in doubt, bridge. Last thing we'll talk about is pinning in general. Here's one of the basic rules that I, I stress with our kids and it's paid major dividends in all my years of coaching. It's be aware of your location in relation to the out of bounds. Jake Russell in the state uh, semifinals last year and had a young man kicked him right over on an elevator, which I'm going to show here in a couple minutes, and caught him right at the edge. First thing came out of my mouth, turn him around! Location, location! I usually always use the word location instead of saying turn around. Turn around, I used to when he was younger. Now it's just location. He knows like, when I say location, that means turn him around. When you're pinning a guy, half muscle, cradles, bar arms, I don't care. If the guy's next to the edge, his opponent or his coach is saying, Location, Johnny, look at your location. And what his coach is basically saying is, get your butt out of bounds, you're right next to the line, stupid, is what he's saying. And if you get out of bounds, roughly stops the match, you get off your back, you get a fresh start in the middle. So if you're, you're, if you're doing the pinning, you, you, the edge is dangerous. Okay, so what we're gonna do is slowly work over this way to the edge. And uh, Jake's gonna have, have me on my back and I'm half, reverse half Nelson right here. Okay, from here, there's the out of bounds line. When he has this, the coach is saying, location. Well, you're right. I'm going to start heading out of bounds to save myself here. Now, this isn't a cradle, but we'll turn this to a cradle in a second. The first thing Jake needs to do is he needs to put himself out of bounds. He's going to circle 180 degrees that way and just keep circling me around. There. Now, he's out of bounds. I'm in bounds. I cannot drive that way and go through those two major thighs. It doesn't go that way. I've got to go 29 feet that direction to get out of bounds. So he's turned me 180 degrees. So now he can concentrate now on pinning and not concentrate on trying to keep me in bounds. If he stays over here and tries to pull me in, I can drive off my legs better than he can pull me in. And I'm going to get out of bounds. If he turns me around, I've got, I can't go that way. I can't drag feet and pull myself that way. It will work. Okay, so 
Anytime you have a guy on his back in a cradle, a headlock, a half nose, bomb arms, I don't care what it is, the very first thing you do when the guy hits his back, you think, number one, where am I located in relation to the out of bounds? Number one. And if you're in the middle, forget you even just thought of that. It was just routine you thought of that. Number two, how much time's left? You should have a sense of whether it's not probably a minute and a half, probably 45, somewhere in that neighborhood, or boy, it's really close to the end of the period. If you have plenty of time, you take your time. You lock it up, you stick it. You know, if you take an extra 15 seconds to pin the guy, take an extra 15 seconds. So you do it right. The object is not to go fast and make mistakes, it's to go slow and do it right. Okay, so, where am I located? If you're in the middle, no problem. At the edge, turn him around. How do you turn him around? You use your legs, you put yourself out of bounds. Turn him around, put your legs here, out of bounds, so he has 28, 29, 30 feet, whatever the size of the mat is, to get out of bounds. He is not going to demoralize the guy. He was right here, that far from getting out of bounds. Now all of a sudden he's that far, 30 feet from getting out of bounds. Oh no, you know, it takes him down a little bit. Good thing to do, how much time's left? You know, if you have 10 seconds or less to go, then you have to scramble. Forget the technique, forget locking it in, forget tightening it up, just squeeze all you got because you don't have any time to tie it up. You just squeeze and squeeze and grunt and see if you can get the pin because you don't have time to get it technically right. There's no time on the clock. You got plenty of time, take your time. You know, if you're in the middle, don't worry about it. So, where are you located? How much time's left? And once you go through that, that thought process, boom, boom, those two thought processes, and then you can go in and spend the time on pinning. So, pinning, whether it's half nails, half arms, half nails, cradles, whatever, doesn't matter. Take your time and look for what you're doing and where you're located on the mat, and you'll have a lot of success.